Melanie Harper, who is our next speaker. Uh, she is joining us from the NEED project and very kindly said she would come and speak to you all today. She's going to be talking about solar energy and then also showing you all the resources that the NEED project can offer you as, as, teaching, as teachers. So, um, Melanie, if you could introduce yourself and take it from here. Thank you. I will. Thank you so much. My name is Melanie Harper, and I am from Justin, Texas. If you don't know where Little Justin is, I'm about 45 minutes south of the Oklahoma border and about 45 minutes north of Fort Worth. So our area is booming and growing and growing and growing. And I'm just happy to be here with you today to share with you about NEED. NEED is an acronym for the National Energy Education Development Project. Uh, we've been around for about 44 years now, and we specialize in energy curriculum for kindergarten through high school students. Um, I am a retired Texas science teacher, and in my 30 years, I taught many different grade levels, in fact, pretty much all of them. Um, and I know that when I had an energy unit to teach, I always went to the NEED curriculum and their website and utilized it because my students were so super engaged. They loved what we were doing and they were just really into it because it was real authentic learning. And so today I'm gonna share with you a solar PowerPoint from that website that is available for you to download free and utilize in your classroom along with many other uh, PowerPoints and um, some information about need in the curriculum. And then we're gonna do a tour of the website and I'll show you where all of that is and where our events are for you to sign up to attend. They are free for teachers and opportunities for your students and you. So I'd like to start off with our solar PowerPoint. All right, solar energy, all the bright kids are doing it. So as we start and we start taking a look at solar energy and what it is, um, in a nutshell about fusion in our sun. Um, our sun has a tremendous amount of heat and pressure pushing down on it, a tremendous amount of gravitational force. So four hydrogen atoms get fused together or welded together. And when they do, they create one helium atom that actually contains less mass. But we know the energy can be neither created nor destroyed, only changed in form. That has been changed in form to radiant energy that travels to our earth as our life-sustaining sunlight. Now, these are light particles or photons of light that leave the sun and travel to our earth at approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. And it takes them about eight minutes to reach our earth. And we can harness this and utilize it. So due to the, to the revolution of the earth around the sun and the tilt of it on its axis, the surface of the earth receives variations of sunlight intensity throughout the year that has a direct impact on electrical generation from solar energy. So as we look at this map, this is gonna show us that where most of the power in the United States could be generated uh, every day, so the arid southwest areas of the U.S. are going to be receive the most intense sunlight. And this is going to be where we should be putting more solar rather than the upper regions of the U.S. where it doesn't get as much solar intensity. The light is not going to be as intense. However, there is solar all over the U.S., just not utilized as much. So the uses of solar that we are utilizing nowadays is for daylighting, for drying agricultural products, uh, such as herbs, for uh, space heating, 
for water heating. And then, of course, we can generate electricity through concentrating solar power towers and through photovoltaics. So well, here's some pictures of daylighting. And you can see where like this cabin in the mountains uh, has a wall of windows to allow radiant energy in. And then of course, when it enters the home, anything that it strikes, it is transformed into thermal or heat energy to warm the home up. And then of course, our schools are using more and more solar energy where they are being built with larger windows so that we are not using lighting, electrical lighting as much that students can also access, you know, and use, read and, and be able to see with the lighting from windows instead of electrical powering and switching on light sources in classrooms and hallways and gymnasiums as well. So when we look at space heating in uh, solar, homes are built with a specific design. So the angle incident from the sun, many of these homes are being built where that winter, the heat, the sun is going to be coming into the home. And then of course it's converted to thermal energy that warms the home up. Whereas during the summer, the angle from the sun is going to be higher. So these homes are built and they are designed with specific materials. They're going to face certain directions. Certain materials are going to be utilized to build these homes to make them the most efficient possible. And then, of course, on homes, we can have active solar heating. Active solar heating means that we are using equipment that is designed for solar energy. So solar water heaters are utilized in homes. They are generally put, the panels are generally put on a south-facing roof to get the most maximum exposure of sunlight possible. They're composed of flat boxes that contain glass bottoms and tops. They have insulation in them. And then they will have a panel that is a black metal that is going to absorb that radiant energy from the sun. And then it'll be converted into thermal or heat energy that heats the tubes, the material that goes through the tubes. And that material that goes back and forth through these tubes, it's almost like a radiator, is going to be air or water. And as it travels back and forth, it is heated. And then, of course, there's going to be a covering over the top to just protect all of this. And once that, that fluid or water is heated, it then goes to a heat exchanger that then is going to send it either into the home or it's going to generally send it into your hot water tank for usage in that home when it is needed. We also have concent uh, concentrating solar power through trough systems. Now, these concentrating trough systems are bent into a parabola shape. It has a transparent tube. I think you can kind of see it running down through the middle of the mirror. And as sunlight strikes the mirror, it is reflected onto that tube. There is a fluid that is flowing through the tube that gets heated by the sunlight. And as that fluid is heated, it then goes to a heat exchanger that is going to boil the water into steam. And from there, it works like any thermal plant, uh, like natural gas, uh, nuclear, or coal. And then we have the solar power towers. This is a picture of the world's largest solar power tower. This is in Seville, Spain. And how these work is has heliostats 
that track the sun, or sometimes they are just mirrors that are in the size of a garage door that are in place, but they focus the light up to a receiver. And then there is salt that goes through the receiver and it gets superheated that is then trans, uh, transported through pressure to a storage tank that where it will then go into the steam generator where it will generate electricity by turning that turbine. And then it will go back in to be reutilized into the salt storage tank. So this is another way that we are looking at utilizing more solar power. So in the United States, Ivanpah is the largest uh, solar power tower in the Mojave Desert. It uses 347,000 garage door mirror-sized mirrors, and it also has 173,500 heliostats that track the sun. And Ivanpah is able to generate enough electricity that it is powering 140,000 homes. So photovoltaics is a little bit different. It also uses the sunlight directly to generate electrical energy. Here is a solar array field. And in this field, these rows of solar panels have the ability to track the sun because they are on a single axis tracking system. So they start and they, in the morning, they are facing the east. And as the sun goes through the sky, they track it. And then at night when the sun goes down, these reset themselves. So they are ready to be east facing in the morning to be able to, uh, they're just very efficient uh, in, utilizing the sun's radiant energy to be able to produce electrical energy. So how does all how does a solar panel work? A lot of people ask me this. So here's here's the skinny on how it works. So boron and phosphorus are elements from the periodic table and they are diffused or doped onto a pure silicone wafer one element per side. And the boron is going to give this silicone wafer a positive type characteristic, while the phosphorus is going to give it a negative type. So this is almost like you can see there's going to be a push and a pull between this positive and this negative like magnets. So where the boron atoms are dispersed into this silicone, it actually creates vacancies or holes where electrons can come and fill in that hole. So those vacancies around the boron electrons get paired with the extra electron from phosphorus that can move into and fill that hole or that vacancy. And where those electrons migrate from the negative layer to the positive layer, it makes that positive layer negative. So when you look at a cell, it is kind of like this. So you have boron that gives this wafer this positive characteristic to take on an electron. And you have this negative layer, phosphorus, that has extra. So you put them together and those electrons are going to begin to flow and they're going to fill up the holes. And it's going to create what we call the P and N junction. Now, when enough radiant energy has been added to these electrons and they become very excited, they begin to flow and pass that energy off. And it's going to go through the, through the cell, 
through the electri electrical wires to the load, giving it the ability to power the load. And then it's going to go back through the system to get a push to go through again, because we know that electricity is a repeating pattern in a cycle within a system. So photovoltaic systems that are, they are DC or direct current systems, and they're going to allow electricity to only flow one way, uh, much like a, like a battery does. And so this diagram just shows that the electricity is going to flow in one direction. So, you know, how's this going to work on a house? Well, first, let me share with you that in order to make a solar panel, what they do is they create a cell. And some cells are so small that they can run your, your um, Apple Watch. They can run your handheld solar calculator. Um, but they put cells together. And when they wire them together, they create solar modules. Now, if you're a classroom teacher, you can take your students out um, on the playground or out on the field, and you can see solar modules because those are what run our slow down to 15 mile an hour speed zones in schools. So those zones are harnessed, that energy is harnessed by the solar module that allows those slow down signs to run. Then they take these modules and they can wire them together and they create solar arrays. Now, when we think of a solar array, please remember that solar farms are often called arrays, but technically they're an array of many arrays. So in a home, here's how this is gonna work. Radiant energy is going to strike the solar panel that has been put on the home. From there, it is connected to a charge controller. And a charge controller actually works kind of like a circuit breaker. It's going to control that flow um, of electrons as it gets going. And it can go either to a DC direct current load, or it can go to a battery to charge a bank of batteries to, for that will hold that energy to be used later on. Some of it then travels to an inverter that is going to invert it, invert it from DC or direct current into AC or alternating current because the alternating current is what our homes require. And so now we have the ability to power a home through that alternating current that was first DC current from radiant energy. So in some states in the United States, uh, solars on a giant utility where there is a company that is using arrays, field arrays or solar on rooftops to generate a large amount is the big thing. But then there are other states that say, no, no, we want to focus on people putting solar on, say, their homes or businesses putting solar on their homes. So we are eliminating utilities. So it just depends on your regulation within the different states, the governmental procedures as to what states are going to be doing in the future. And this map just kind of shows the states that are looking at utility scale versus states that are looking at smaller scale. So the top countries in the world that are using solar energy right now um, are China and then the United States, then Japan, India, Germany, and then the rest of the world. And we are looking at a 1,185 gigawatts of solar energy that is produced worldwide. 
So as with any energy source, renewables or non-renewables, there are advantages and disadvantages to every single one of them. And I, I think it's important that our students know this, and it brings up great debate in the classroom as well. So solar energy has many good advantages. There's no emissions from the generation once it's in place. Sunlight is free. So that's good. It's sustainable for the future. And it provides electricity to remote locations. So this is a picture of solar energy being used in the Swiss Alps to run a generator for a group of scientists that are doing research up there. And then this picture down here is solar energy it's on a buoy out in the middle of the ocean that is used for uh, shipping and maritime navigation. And then, of course, we are going to have the disadvantages, and it's only fair to mention them as well. So with solar energy, it is less efficient. Uh, the more efficient solar panels really are only generating uh, 41 to 45 percent efficient, and they are more expensive than panels that are not as efficient that are the ones generally be, being put on homes. So, and it is costly to get this going on your home. And then the pay, then you have to look at what is your payback period going to be. Uh, for a residential systems, it's approximately $3.50 a watt installed to get everything on and online and going. So that's quite a bit for one kilowatt, one kilowatt hour of electricity, $3.50 is pretty high. So that right now is, they're going to be coming down as we get more and more into solar, but that is the all in. Please remember that is the all in. So the other, another disadvantage is peak production does not coincide with peak demand for electricity. So early in the morning, people are getting up, we're using a lot of energy. We're, we, we have multiple appliances running to cook breakfast. Uh, we have children in their rooms, putting their clothes on, getting ready. Maybe you've started a load of laundry. You have the stove going, the microwave going, the coffee pots going, you may have the TV set going. Then it's the reverse happens at night with moms throwing the laundry in and it's going and we have multiple appliances going for dinner uh, to be cooked. We have uh, maybe multiple technologies going with televisions and tablets and we're not able to meet that demand with solar if the sun is not shining. Um, we also have to think about the seasonal and location um, for solar generation. And there is an environmental impact for solar PV production. Uh, there is land usage. And then there are spent materials that we need to be figuring out with, what are we going to do with some of these pretty nasty things from solar once that panel has been spent? Now, it may be that that panel is going to last you 20 to 30 to 40 years, but then what? These are all things to think about. This is, I am not going to show this video. I just want to share with you that if you download and utilize this in your classroom from the NEED website, there is a video here about the production of silicone. And it does take the students through what is going on um, in the production of silicone because there are some heavy metals involved in using the production of silicone for solar panels. And these are things that we need to think about in the future when we're, we're using this energy and how we're going to be solving the problems that we're creating by having this wonderful source of energy. So on our website, we have a complete solar 
curriculum for primary through secondary. So secondary teachers, yours is called Exploring Photovoltaics. We have a teacher's guide that gives you all of the information that you would need to know about solar energy. Um, and then there is a student guide that you can download and utilize with students either online or off. It is experiments that you can utilize with your students to help them understand about solar energy. And they also use digital multimeters, which is something important they need to use. They need to learn how to use a multimeter when they're in high school. For more information, you can go to our website and we're going to go there. And you can also, if you have questions, you can email me or you can email NEED and or you can call the NEED office during regular business hours. A live person will answer the phone. And we work very closely with the Energy Information Administration and the U.S. Department of Energy. Their website that we like to utilize is eia.gov, and that is where we get most we get all of our data from them. So another source uh, resource that I want to share with you, because as a retired teacher, I know for classroom teachers, it's all about having resources with students. But the um, Interstate Renewable Energy Council, which is the IREC has come up with these career maps that are amazing to use with kids. And they this is the solar map. And so the solar map, what they do is the students would hover over these holes and then a job will appear and it gives them a brief description about that job in the solar industry then they can click on it and it's going to give them the ability to go to a page where there is a lot of information about this job. So high school students need to be thinking about jobs and what they're going to do with their lives. So these maps are wonderful. These, uh, It's going to give information about the salary that you can be making. It's going to give what type of schooling and education you need and how many years that might require. Some of those jobs are their their P-TECH schools. So they're going to be a year or they're going to be a year and a half. And that's going to be a lot less expensive than going to a formal university. It gives information on the skills that are required and the training that you'll have to have for on the job um, it gives information about apprenticeships for students and other requirements. So on this website, it also gives has others as well. And I'll, I'll show you that real quick too when I get offline, <laughs> when I get online. But before I just close this PowerPoint out, let me give you some information about the NEED project as well, because I want you to know that we offer more than just solar. All of our curriculum is free for you to download and utilize in your classroom. We offer free professional development, and we are in the Houston area a lot. Uh, I know a lot of you have mentioned you're from the Houston area. We support our teachers through we are there when you need us through email, or you can call our main office. And then we have a lot of opportunities for kids to be recognized. We think that students should be actively participating in their own education and not sitting and reading textbooks and answering questions at the end of the chapter. So we are broken out into these various levels, but I want to share with you as a former high school teacher, I remember having students in on the secondary level that couldn't read on a secondary level. And so I was able to go down and snag those intermediate pieces and let my students read those intermediate pieces. And it empowered my students to want to learn because they felt successful. So this is an option that you have for students that are struggling. 
We are aligned to the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills. We know that's a big thing in Texas. We know you have brand new ones coming at you starting in August. And we are right now finishing up the alignment of all of our curriculum materials to your brand new TEKS. And they will be online when you start school in August to help you out. Some of the things that we are going to be able to help you with and provide for you are the science of energy that is going to help your students understand about what the forms of energy are and how energy can transform from one form of energy to another form of energy and many different forms of energy as it travels through a system. The sources of energy, we offer curriculum on five renewable sources of energy and five non-renewable sources of energy. We provide the facts only in a non-biased fashion. We know that it takes all of the sources of energy to make the world go round. We cannot go one source of energy for the entire planet or one, whether it's renewable or non-renewable, it just can't be done. It's all about location, 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 and that energy should be affordable for people. Uh, electricity, lots of information there to help your students understand. What, what, how does that bulb illuminate when I flip on the light switch? Where did it begin? What happens in a power plant? How does it get to my house? All of those questions are answered. And there are hands-on activities to do with your students. There are videos to utilize. There are PowerPoints to utilize. There's just a ton of information. Transportation fuels. We have three brand new pieces of transportation fuels online. We do talk about the traditional fuels, but we have lots and lots of curriculum on the new fuels, EVs, biofuels. Um, and so those new curriculum pieces are there. Lots of information on efficiency, conservation, how we can save in buildings, uh, green building, building green buildings. We have information on climate science and what, it, you know, things to do with your students about climate science, activities to do with them, hands-on investigations. And then, of course, those of you teaching high school, information on career and workforce development. Uh, what are the soft skills that students need? What are the hard skills that students need? What do they need to know? Then we actually have pieces of curriculum that we put together. Solar is one of them that goes through the solar guides and training that students would need to become a some someone doing something in the industry of solar or wind or you know oil and gas or transportation because we need all of this all of our materials are reviewed annually by our teacher advisory board and then we also have an energy industry advisory board so one of the things that i remember in the classroom is teaching my students the definition of energy is that it is the ability to make change or do work and they could regurgitate it for a test or a quiz but I could ask them a month or two later and they would look at me like a deer in headlights they really hadn't learned it because they didn't understand the definition so now we've come up with here's the definition to the definition to help kids understand what does make change or do work mean? And for energy, it means it produces movement. It produces heat and light and sound. It allows things to grow through the process of photosynthesis and it runs our technology and appliances. So, in the science of energy, in this particular guide, we have a one page sheet that talks to students about what the forms of energy are, 
how they fall under two categories. And then it goes in and it gives them information about the potential forms of energy, the definition of what it is in a nutshell and an example so that they understand and have that. And then how it can transform into a kinetic form of energy. It goes through the kinetic forms of energy and gives them that example. So they have this all on one piece of paper. And all you have to do is download this guide. And I'm going to show you where on the website to do that. And then you will have this to utilize with your students in your classroom. And this is going to hit many different forms of energy, which is also going to be also how electrical energy can be produced, which goes into everything else that we have talked about this morning. It's all connected, folks. It's all connected. And I also wanted to show you that we have transition pieces that take you from this is the form to this is the sources, and it brings in some mathematics as well. We do have a lot of mathematical pieces on our website. So this piece here shows where students are going to be recording the form of energy that each of the non-renewable and renewable sources of energy is. Then they're also going to be extrapolating data off of this chart and calculating out energy usage in the United States, showing that, you know, right now we are still using more chemical energy than we are any other form of energy. And that by renewables and non-renewables, we are still using more non-renewables than we are renewables. But I will tell you that I have been with the NEED project wearing one hat or another because I helped write a lot of this curriculum. I have watched this renewable number go from like 2.2 all the way to 12.4. So we're making great gains as we go forward. So on the website too, I'm going to show you how to download this catalog. This is your tool that will really help you. This is catalog is going to tell you every single piece of curriculum that we offer. It gives a synopsis about what it is about, and then it gives the grade levels. Because we don't want an elementary teacher going, oh, thermodynamics, what is this? This looks great. And then opening it up and going, holy smoke, my kids can't do this. I'm done with this. I'm not even going to use need. We have it set up for you to utilize this catalog so that you know when you open that up, that grade, what grade level it is, so that when you download it off of our website, you know you're getting what is right for your level of students. We also have what we, we tease each other at need about is our info book Bibles. So these info book Bibles are in energy info books that are going to be giving your students an introduction to energy. They provide informational text and data on all of the energy resources. It gives information on global climate science, on energy carriers, on energy consumption and efficiency sustainability and conservation and they are written on different grade levels so again if you have a student struggling go down and grab a lower level book to help them out to help them be successful in reading um, these are our energy readers so they provide students with a ton of ton of great information just a little bit before we hit the website, there are PowerPoints for you to download for free and use. There are energy graphics. So if you're building your own test, you just want a picture of a windmill for the test. Maybe you want students to identify parts of the windmill. That's there. Um, there is the, our free curriculum. We have over 160 guides now online free for you to download and utilize. 
We have book lists. So if you need, if you want your students to read something on, say, biomass, there is a book list that you can pull up and it will give you the author and the title, a synopsis, and even public library, you know, if they even do it anymore, the old ISBN numbers. Um, there's lots of resources for students. We have a whole section on our website just for students. There's games, there's activities. If they need a science fair project or other projects, there also. And then I will be showing you where to sign up for free professional development and more. So on our shop, there is, as I said, over 150 different guides, curriculum guides to download for free that are aligned. Uh, they are av also available in e-publication. As you download them, you'll see they are a PDF, but they're available in e-publication as well. Very quickly, I will share with you that we do a need summer training every summer. This next summer, it's going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you will go to need.org slash educators, you can fill out the application and click on it that you need a scholarship. And if you are selected, they will get you there free of charge. All of your motel bills will be paid. Your food bills will be paid. Everything is covered. Now, if you are not accepted this year, you will be put on a list and accepted next year. This, uh, we try to take teachers from every state in the United States and bring them together. Um, but NEA is international as well. So we have teachers that come from all over the world. We've had teachers from Taiwan and Venezuela and Australia. And it's really kind of fun because you get to um, collaborate with all of these different teachers from all over the world. But what we do during this week is it's very energy intensive. And you go through and you do every hands-on kit that we have available. Our kits are for purchase only, but you can build a lot of the things instead of buying the kits. Um, and so you would be doing all of that. So you're going to be getting nuclear and biomass, every single energy resource there is on the sources of energy. So you'll be doing for the renewable and the re non-renewable, all of those kits. You'll be learning about electricity. You'll be learning about transportation fuels. It takes you through, it's, it is an intensive week. So if you're interested in giving up a week of your summer vacation, check it out. We'd love to have you. I also will share with you, too, as you do this Envirothon with your students, document it and then put it together in a PowerPoint presentation. Send it into need. We have judges that judge these PowerPoints and videos. And if you are selected as a winner, they will fly you and one or two of your students to Washington, D.C. for our Youth Awards program. Um, this is, is something I really encourage you to do because we do have children in the state of Texas that will never get out of the state of Texas. And this gives them an opportunity to go to our nation's capital um, because that is deemed need week. When you go out with your students into the D.C. community, your metro tickets are paid for. The metro is one block from the hotel where you will be housed. And you can go to any museum that week and it is free. So all of the Smithsonian Institutes are available. Um, I do believe there are a couple of them that ask for a small donation pitch them a few dollars and your students can get in for free. And it's a wonderful opportunity for our students to be in the nation's capital. We also um, are looking at bringing back, we had to stop during COVID, but we're looking at bringing back our riverboat cruise. So we take you one night for dinner and dancing on the Potomac River. 
Um, and then we have a ceremony where we recognize all of the winners throughout the U.S. that have won an award for being an outstanding school. So that is just another opportunity to get your students engaged in learning about energy. And that would be need.org slash youth awards. So we are social on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel and Twitter. When you get to our website, um, the green toolbar is your access to everything. But on the first page, let's just kind of scroll down. If you are still doing any kind of distance learning, we have an entire section of our website dedicated for you to um, utilize learning online with your students. It's uh, got some different activities to do with your students online, um, ideas, uh, different, um, we give you helpful hints, uh, tricks to utilize online with your students. Down below this, this is events, and you can click on events and it will bring up all of the workshops that are being offered in the United States. We do have one coming up in Houston. Um, it is in March. Um, you can register for it. When you come to one of our workshops, you are going to receive a free breakfast and a free lunch. We are going to pay for your substitute teacher. If it is a Saturday workshop, you will receive a $100 stipend for attending our workshop. Depending on the funder of the workshop, you'll receive an energy kit. Usually they like to give the science of energy kit that teaches students about energy transformations. So that way students understand what's going on, whether you're, whether you're doing solar or you're doing wind. They, they need to understand what an energy transformation is to understand how those sources of energy work. But we also have funders that will give you know, the kid win kits, we have them that will give the solar kits. So that is an opportunity for you as well. And then as we scroll on down, you can get to our curriculum from here, our catalog from here. Um, evaluation, I want you to know on evaluation, when you click on this, there are assessments already ready to go, energy assessments for you to give as a pre-assessment, then teach your unit and give it as a post-assessment. And then you can go back through and see, what did the kids miss? What question did they constantly miss? I need to go back and reteach that because either they were all absent that day or I didn't do a very good job of it that day. So that's a good opportunity to build your teaching skills as well. And then as we scroll on down, you can learn about youth awards here if you're interested in taking students to D.C. And then uh, there's op opportunities for students to be leaders within need. We do lots of summer programs with kids and use, utilize them uh, to not only just be there, but to actually run those programs. They're trained to run those programs. And then we have information on our partners and sponsors for need. And then on down the latest, we give news and announcements. So if I come back up, I'm going to click on educators. And I want you to see that now it appears that there is a drop down box. And on this drop down box, it takes you to professional development will also, I can't give it, okay. It will also, this is where you can find information about the national conference if you would like to attend it during this summer. And then look here, curriculum resources has a sidebar. So curriculum correlations is where you're going to find um, correlations of the NEED curriculum to the TEKS. And when you open this up, it is aligned to NSGS, but then we are aligned to every single state in the United States state standards. So just scroll down to Texas and give it a moment to load. It is a massive document. Do not click print.
because it is all connected kindergarten through every high school science discipline. It is over 800 pages long, and that ream of paper they gave you for the school year will be gone. So just download it. It is an Excel document. Then we have basic curriculum units, after school programs. A lot of you have science clubs after school. Uh, you may also be in a situation where you work with a 4-H club. You may work with the boys club or the girls club. You may have a science club. We have a lot of information on after school programs and what to do with the kids to keep them engaged. They've been in school all day. They're tired. They may not want to be there. But here's a way to keep them engaged and excited, and they want to come to class. They want to come to that afternoon adventure. And then our awesome extras. And we're going to be going to awesome extras here real quick. So as you scroll down, all of that is kind of there again. But then here's additional resources. So here's those evaluations for you to download and utilize with students. Here's students' re resources. This is going to provide kids. They can get online and they can see all of the information about energy. It's going to give them resources. There's games for them to play. There's activities for them to do. Then we have our basic curriculum unit. Um, much of our curriculum is in Spanish. There's a big demand for more curriculum in Spanish. It just takes time to get it done, formatted, and then put back online. But a lot of our curriculum is in Spanish in case you need to utilize that. There's the correlations and after school programs graphic library, and then the awesome extras. This is where you're going to find all of the PowerPoints um, and our YouTube channel. And on our YouTube channel, we have um, our curriculum director, Emily Hobbaker. She does activities and guides students through them. So if you don't want to mess with your kids that day, but you've got the equipment, Pull that up and she'll walk them through and they can do the investigation with her. Um, we're teachers are people. Sometimes you need a moment, you know, so those YouTube videos can be utilized that way as well. I want to take you to our shop and show you really quick in our shop. Up here in the search bar is where you can uh, download curriculum that you know the name of. You will need to formulate a login on the NEED website. We just ask for your name and your school, your grade. Um, and it's just to, we would never sell your information because we know how annoying it is with companies that do sell your information. So it won't be sold, but you will be put in our da database. So once you're in our database, you'll get emails with, Hey, there's a workshop coming up in your area, or here's some new curriculum online, or here's curriculum that has been updated. So it keeps you up to date with what is going on with our organization as well. Please notice that down the side, uh, you can click on all products. You can click on our curriculum packet. Curriculum packets are free curriculum that are given to teachers when they attend a need workshop. Uh, then we have, you can look at our curriculum by grade level, so you can go to just secondary guides, or you can come down, and let's say you just want something on hydropower. You can click on hydropower, and that hydropower curriculum will come up, um, And you or you can scroll on down, and maybe you just want something on climate science, so you can click on that and find uh, lots of activities to do with students there. Uh, maybe you want students to look at where are we going in the future with energy. So you want to click on our hydrogen or our ocean energy or our transportation pieces. And then, of course, as school teachers, we certainly hope you will utilize our career and workforce development opportunities as well. So um, once you have logged in, all you have to do is um, I want to to pull up the catalog and show you just how simple this is. You're going to just click on it 
you're going to add it to your cart. And then once you are ready, you just check out. And then all you have to do is, because you've signed in, all you have to do is follow the website. And all of this, of course, is free for you to download. Um, okay, and sorry, I Melanie. I don't I mean to interrupt. We have a question. Okay. Yes, a uh, quick question. So Kim wants to know, do you have any resources on the energy grid and its ability to handle resources such as increased electric vehicles? Yes, we do. We absolutely did do. It's called Reliable Energy on our website. And it even goes now, it goes into the new microgrids that we're looking at for across the United States and what microgrids are and explains to students about those. It talks about our national grid and how it is divided by north and south. Um, it talks as there are activities that you can do with your students about uh, how we manage energy going through uh, at night. We don't utilize as much, but we still have to have a certain amount of energy running all of the time to meet the needs of demand by like hospitals and things that are up, up and running all night long to how we ramp it up in the morning and then uh, make our way through the day using renewable and renewable sources of energy. There are activities there um, and plenty to do on that. So yes, and the microgrids is, is a way to look also with students, uh, thinking about places like Hawaii, where they utilize um, solar for their microgrids. Everybody has solar so that they don't have a giant utility. And how nuclear is being looked at, uh, smaller nuclear reactors to run small cities and towns. It's very interesting. Are we all good? Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Um, and please let us know if there's anything that we can help you with in your energy curriculum. Contact us at need and just put that energy into education. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Melanie. We, we really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Yeah, those are terrific teacher uh, resources. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Yes.